I stay here and continue to witness and to minister and to testify and to preach and to reach back and to guide and lead this church. But he said, but for me, it would be better for me if I went on home to be with my Lord. And as I was reading that passage, the words of a song came to me that was sung an old Negro hymn. Soon I will be done with the troubles of this world. Anybody got troubles? Anybody got any medicine in your medicine cabinet? Anybody got glasses on your eyes? Anybody had any heartaches and pains, any disappointments in life? The troubles of the world. But then she went on to say that I'm going home to be with my Lord. And the last time I read the book of Revelation, it said that there was no crying there and that there was no tears there and that God would wipe away every tear from our eyes. And what that really means is that there will be no reason to cry in heaven. We know, as Pastor Carl Davis said so eloquently earlier, that Brother Chestnut is with his Lord. And on October the 26th, he gained. God bless you. Amen. God bless you this morning to the friends and families of Mr. James Chestnut. Uh, I was, when I found out about Brother Chestnut passing, I said, well, maybe I've got an opportunity to, to serve as a pallbearer at the service. And uh, he was very, he put a definite impression. Such an honor. Uh, Texas is blessed to have such a man like Brother James Chestnut to come our way. And he came from Ohio to Texas. And upon coming here, I met him, I would say, I know it was 25, maybe 30 years ago. I was serving at the Lower Ranch Street Church of God in Christ. He was at the Buck Street Church of God in Christ. And uh, well, I go with his brother.
But the test that was an older teacher, I was younger than him, he was able to instruct me on how to be a deacon in the church. And I always believe that there are two different types of deacons in the church. You know, uh, after they share some things with me about how he expressed himself, that some deacons, whatever the pastor said goes, I've been a deacon to respect leadership. And uh, uh, let's talk about it. Brother Chestnut encouraged me. Whenever you talk, do it in a respectful way. Yeah. Brother Craig Harris, <laughs> Brother Street, yes, sir. And that's the type of deacon, young deacon, that we are. It's good to see Brother Ramsey, strong deacon at Brother Street, and other deacons here at the Williams Temple Church of God in Christ. Brother Plattenberg is here as well as Brother Johnson. Now, before I close, I want to say this here. Brother Chestnut, the reason I say he was a blessing to the Houston area is because he was good in bylaw and 501c3. And Pastor Julio last night touched base, touched and talked about that. A lot of churches in the Houston area would be in deep trouble if they had not came by Deacon James Chestnut. Lining up your church business in 501c3. So, I'm just glad for that. And he also was able to help me get some bylaws together for me. My organization, which is Take the Southeast Men of Integrity. Praise God. And thank you for this time. <laughs>
grace for claiming to be a school continued and upholding that commitment to her care. Jan was a father and a handyman. As a father, he was second to none. He was always actively supportive in all kinds of stuff for his kids and his grandkids, whether it be academics, sports, milestones, large and small, graduation, got a trophy at school, whatever it was. Probably heard mom from the stand yelling and cheering, but you saw Jan over there clapping. The uh, decision not to let us play football in middle and high school was a big one for me. I had all my friends playing football. I see Big Dave Boston in the back, I see Kobe over here. And so they, 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 they laugh and tease Bob, but your dad's not going to let you train. And you know what coach has said is you can go. Coach wants you to do, you know, 100 push-ups, you do 100 push-ups. He wants you to run 10 miles, you run 10 miles. And Jan says, no, you're not going to play. And so to know that him and mom was the one calling the shot, I never understood until I had kids of my own. And so I say, what goes on and what doesn't go on <laughs> with my children. And so I appreciate the effort for teaching that lesson. I remember the trips in the rotary truck. Man. We learned how to use a key map. Yeah, the boat key. Yeah, yeah. I heard one year. I heard one year. <laughs> and the value of hard work. Dad wasn't afraid of getting his hands dirty. And even though Mr. Alfred teased me that my days are now spent tapping away on the keyboard, if push comes to shove, I guarantee I'm down to some grimy, back breaking, callous calls of work. Just let me know, Mr. Alfred. Whatever you got, I'm ready. He also made sure that he had us work during high school. I had my coaches hot. I would leave practice and have to go to work at Exeter. Coach counted me every day. Chestnut, what's wrong with you? Just that nigga. I don't understand. You don't need to be working. You need, you need to be in there in, in the gym working and playing. He said, No, you're going to work. You're going to drive that big dog with the big calves, go to him. You got to go with him. Earn your keep. The incentives. You want to take Frene out? Some little red lobster? Some, some, some cheese biscuits? Cheese biscuits. So earn your keep. Dad loved the RV. He loved chemistry. He loved outdoors. He loved building things. The snow slide up in Cleveland, the treehouse on Wax Wing. He converted the garage into a home office. The PVC pipe basketball return to shoot in the backyard. Y'all thought y'all had something with David Buckley. Salt 
foods of this savor, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled by men. You are the light of the world. And in working and consulting with mom and dad as they built JCNA over the years, dad wasn't always the most popular guy at the table. Because of him following the directive of being the salt and doing things the right way. So he commanded respect. And he was respected. Because the Lord had given him instruction, a calling, and a directive to get the Lord's temple, the churches, in the proper order. Amen. We stayed in church growing up. Shout out to all the Buck Street Kojic members out of here. You know what it was. Sunday school in the morning, worship service about 11, 3 p.m. special service, YPWW about 6.30. <laughs> Evening service started about 7 30. And then we had Monday prayer. And then we had Wednesday Bible study. And then we had some youth activities mixed in there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if we had finished up our weekend homework on Saturday, please don't think we're going to have any time on Sunday to do it. We were gone all day. <laughs> Renee and I look to continue a abbreviated version of that session with our kids to ensure that they develop real relationships with God. Dad loved to witness. Dad was 38 years old when I was born. So for me, he's been saved my whole life. And he's been spreading the good news, gospel of Jesus Christ that entire time. So needless to say, it didn't surprise me, even when his health was declining, and he was having rough days here and there, that he still found an opportunity to witness. I know the hospice nurses and doctors thought they were there to administer advice, and medicine to him. But Dad had other plans. <laughs> Whoever the Lord sent through that bedroom door, <laughs> Dad took it as an opportunity to administer the healing medicine of Jesus Christ. James jokingly said the other day that Dad was sent through over here to pass his witnessing stats, <laughs> showing off. So that there'd be absolutely no question when he got to the pearly gates of heaven. And they said, hello, uh, Mr. Chester, have you been with us? He said, I, I just got through. <laughs> Dead praise. One of the underlying things of last night's services at the, at the wake service that I was surprised about, but not surprised about, is that mom and dad being prayer warriors. They taught us how to pray, privately, publicly corporately, collectively. They demonstrated to us how to pray. They prayed for anybody, anywhere, anytime. From elementary through high school, I remember circling every day before we went to school, before we walked out the door, we were going to circle. And we prayed and prayed and prayed. And mom prayed the blood of Jesus over us that no hurt, harm, or danger by her praying the word. No hurt, harm, or danger swallowed from my sin. And if we didn't do it then, then we prayed in the parking lot as they dropped us off at school. And then by chance, we picked up some friends on the way that got a little prayed on to them. <laughs> Not just the typical traditional places that you're supposed to pray over meals and holidays and weddings. When I say anywhere, anytime, I really mean anywhere, anytime, right then, right there. In the grocery store, check out line. At the beginning of a business meeting, to set the tone for the meeting. At the end of a business meeting, to leave it all in one accord, whatever was said. We're on a phone call with the son who's 2,000 miles away at college, stressed out, struggling, on a rooftop overlooking downtown LA, trying to figure out what mess he done got himself into. They prayed. Well, first he told me to get off the rooftop. <laughs> and then he went and got mom. <laughs> then they prayed. <laughs> so whether you did as a husband, father, friend, business owner, boss, giver, one thing that I do know is that Dad was the man after God's own heart. And even though God's plan and my plan for Dad on this earthly, let me start over. And even though God's plan and my plan for Dad's time on this earth didn't match up, give or take, I was one of about 21 years. <laughs> I have trust and faith in God's sovereign plan that James Chestnut Jr., my daddy, Live the life that God needed him to live. And it's now our duty to continue to digest everything that we've been taught and to go.
go live our lives, our lives as God intended. Amen. Amen. Amen.
She relied on me to take care of my little brother, Lamont. She relied on me to take care of my godmother, Clara Allen. So I was kind of the head of the household. You know, and I took a lot of pride in that responsibility. I loved my mother dearly and I always tried to please my mom and to not give her any trouble. And uh, so I was a pretty decent kid, but there was something missing in my life. I didn't have a father. I never had had a father. I was 14 years old, and I had never had a father tell me I love you. I had never had a father who took the time to take me places, to teach me things, to teach me how to be a man. So I know a lot of people have had a lot to say, but I just want to keep it plain and keep it simple. I love James Chestnut Jr. with all my heart because he taught me how to be a man and he loved me as his son, not as his stepson, but as his son. Day one, he took me under his wing, a teenager who was trying to survive the main streets of Cleveland. And you all know what the main streets of Cleveland are like. I was at a crossroads in my life gone down the path of drugs and alcohol and getting in trouble and hanging out, and I had plenty of buddies right down the street who I could go down that path with. But on weekends, our family had different plans. We headed off in an RV to Anderson State Park. And as a, as a young man, I had an opportunity to go fishing spend time in nature and to be a teenager and not run around and play around with girls and get somebody knocked up and all that good stuff. The other thing and the most important thing is my mother and my father received Christ and they started taking us to church and we received Christ as well. That was the most significant thing that's happened to me in my life. And with all of the modeling of how to be a man that my younger brother so eloquently laid out, I'm sure James will say as well, all of that man school stuff. Learning about God learning about Christ, and learning to build a personal relationship with him has served me my entire life. I was blessed to find a godly woman, Angela, to marry, and I married her because of Christ. I knew that I wanted the same kind of relationship that my parents had. I couldn't imagine going through life without someone who loved Christ the way that I did. So, I've got something special for you all. Uh, coming up shortly, goes back to our days at Williams Temple, where we as a family went to the Lord and he's blessed us. And when I sing it for you, I hope you really enjoy it. God bless you.
Get your word to the Lord.